Hi, it's Kathy Adams Clark, and I'm going to show you how to set up your preferences in Adobe Bridge CS6. In previous lessons, I've explained why we use Bridge and told you that Bridge is the workhorse of Photoshop. But we have to do some setting up of Bridge just a little bit before we can actually start processing our photos. The nice thing about setting Bridge up one time is that after that you can just dive right in and start working on your photos anytime you bring them in. But in the beginning, we've got to get things set up. So one of the ways we're going to set things up is we're going to go up here and click this tab called Adobe Bridge CS6. And underneath it, it's going to have two very important items. One of them is Camera Raw Preferences and the other one is Preferences. So click on Camera Raw Preferences and in Camera Raw Preferences, we are going to select Sidecar XMP files. That means that our data when we work on our raw files will be stored in an XMP file. We are also going to click on Apply Auto Grayscale Mix when converting to grayscale. We're going to set our cache. It should be set this way automatically coming out of the box but to a one gig. And this, by the way, is where your cache is stored. What's cache? what we call cookies in the computer world so that when you're, you bring photos into Photoshop Bridge they'll load faster after the bridge has seen them one time and so those little thumbnails of each one of your photos are stored in cache. We are going to unclick or not have clicked it's DNG handlings and down here automatically open JPEGs with settings and automatically open TIFFs with settings. That's pretty easy, pretty much the way it comes out of the box. The second one is a little bit more individualistic and that's your preferences of how you want Photoshop Bridge to act. So I'm going to show you what I've done and then you can set it up like I've done and then make your modifications from there. Under general, I've decided that I like a sort of gray and black background. If you would rather something that's white, you can move the tabs over. Down here under behavior, I have clicked double click edits camera raw settings in bridge. That means when I double click on any of my raw files, they are going to automatically open up in camera raw. If you use your loop or find that you want to use your loop a lot, then that's a nice little tab that you can also click. I use it in Camera Raw. And then the favorites, remember those favorites right there that we set up earlier before in one of the other lessons? Computer, Desktop, and Documents, and Kathy Adams Clark on my file, on my um, computer. Thumbnails, how do you want your thumbnails to look? Under each one of my thumbnails, I want to see the date I created it and eventually the description that I add. If you want to see your keywords or other things like that, there's a lot of different options. You decide. These are the two that I have. Playback, this is more for audio and so I've just clicked these right here. They came from uh, right out of the box. Metadata is very important. If you scroll down, you will notice that we have got a ton of items that we can choose including GPS coordinates. Select the items you want. Notice that all that I want is IPTC core. I unclicked everything else that's on this list. IPTC core is what I can see right over here and that is my name and my address and my telephone number, my email address and my website copyright declaration on my photos. I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit later on, as well as the description and the keywords. What's IPTC Core? That's the place where international photographers have decided that they will put all their information, and as a result, all the software companies go and read it right there. So this is the best place to put all of your metadata information, your name and your address and your telephone number. That's the best place. Keywords. We, I want a hierarchical system and apply, automatically apply, apply current, parent keywords. I'll show you why we do that later on in another lesson. Labels, do you want your best pictures to be red or do you want your seconds to be yellow? Do you want greens to be your approved pictures? This is all up to you whether you want to use a color coding system. File type association, if you have been using another software besides Adobe Photoshop CS6, you might want to go in 
and look through all of these file type associations and this is where you can clean up and get rid of some of your old software so that you can get everything opened up by the appropriate software. For instance, if we want um, a CRW or a CR2, those are Canon RAW files, I'm telling it that I want them to be opened up in Photoshop CS6. Same thing if we go down here, scan down here, we've got Nikon's NEFs, those are Nikon RAW files, and once again we want those opened up by Adobe Photoshop CS6. This is really important to clean up all these file type associations, especially if you have been using other software programs to work on your photos. So this is where we can clean all of that up. Cache, I told you about that. That's the little cookies that are saved, so each one of these photos will load just a little bit faster. In mine, I've got keep 100% previews in cache. This is, once again, my location where it is saved. And then down here, we can periodically purge cache, which we need to do after we have worked on photos and then move them to an external hard drive. Startup scripts, which, photo, which softwares by Adobe do you want to open up when you first start up your computer? I have my CS6 um, that, that opens up. And then also, this is very important, Adobe Output Module. We'll use this in a little bit in some other lessons, and so you need to click that because that's a real nice one to have opened up. Advanced, you see that I've just left a few of them closed or, or um, unclicked. You can read underneath there and see whether you want them. And then Output, just this one right there in the middle, Convert Multibyte File Names. And then, once you've got all that set up, click okay and it stays right there until you go in and make any changes and what I've seen with working with a lot of people in Photoshop Bridge is that if we can get those preferences set up then the software operates the way you want it. I know it's taking a while to get everything set up and you're eager to work on your photos but we got to get the setup straight before we can start working on our photos then everything's a piece of cake from there on. Thanks for joining me. I'm Kathy Adams-Clark. Come on back and let's have some more lessons.